Here we'll do a double VLOOKUP. So I'm going to show you how to basically just put one VLOOKUP within another VLOOKUP. And that's actually just simple function nesting, but it can seem kind of complicated or a little bit scary since we're doing VLOOKUPs. And what I've done here is I have the lookup data on the same worksheet as we're going to do the VLOOKUP functions. Now you may or may not already know how to put that on separate worksheet or tabs, which is definitely preferred, but it's going to make it a little bit easier to follow when keeping all of the data on the same tab. Now what I'm assuming here is that we've got one table with, let's say, sales that the company has made. And it's a very simple table. We've got the unique sale number, so each sale has its own number, then a company, and the number for the person that made the sale. Now what we have over here is a table of data for all the salespeople. So we can use the number for that salesperson to go to this table and get more information about that person, such as their name, region, phone number, email, and whatever else you have in that table. Now we need two VLOOKUPs for this because we want to take the lookup value here, which is going to be the unique sale number, use that to find the number for the salesperson for that sale. Then that's going to form the lookup value for the outermost VLOOKUP. Then we use that value to do a VLOOKUP on this table. So all we're going to be doing is a normal VLOOKUP like this, and then we're going to put one more VLOOKUP right in here for the lookup value argument. Now when you do that, you're going to get a significantly longer formula that looks like this. Now that may seem a little bit confusing or scary, but let's walk through a few examples. Now here I am assuming that you know how to do a basic VLOOKUP. I'll go slow for the examples, but it will be a lot easier if you've already viewed an introduction to VLOOKUP functions tutorial. So first actually, let me show you how it works. If we type in any sales number here, let's remove that, let's say 2, what it does is it looks for the sale number 2 in this table, then it gets the salesperson number, then it goes to this table and it says where is 9536, here we go, and returns the name Bruce Calloway. Alright, so let's start with equals VLOOKUP. Now, for the very first argument, normally we would select a cell that contains the value we want to use to look or search through a table. And for many examples, it's been this cell right here. But now, we need to put a VLOOKUP function in for this argument. So we just start typing VLOOKUP. Hit tab, it fills it in for us. Now we start the second VLOOKUP function. Now don't worry that we're nested, just think of it as if you're doing a normal VLOOKUP function, because that's all it is. So here what we want to do, our goal, is to use the sales number entered here to return the salesperson value. So VLOOKUP, select the cell that contains the value we want to look up, comma, where's the table that we're going to use to do the lookup? Right here comma. Now which column contains the data that we want? 1, 2, 3, the salesperson, comma, and false for an exact match. Now we close the parentheses for this function. That's very important to remember. So close parentheses. Now that is our entire argument for the lookup value for the first VLOOKUP. Notice the lookup value is highlighted in bold here. So we hit comma and move to the next argument. Now we have returned a lookup value for the very first VLOOKUP. Well, what table do we want to search through with that lookup value? This table right here. So select it, comma. Now what do we want to return? Well, I'm in the name cell. So let's return the name, which is in column two, comma. And I want an exact match, so false. Then close the parentheses for the outer VLOOKUP. Now we hit enter. And that's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and test it out. So if I type 1, 
we return Tony. So one, let's check it out. Sale number one, salesperson 7245, 7245, and Tony. Two, and three. And you can see, that's how you can use a double VLOOKUP to search through two tables of data. Now notice that when I remove this value, the VLOOKUP returns an NA error. That's pretty easy to fix with if error or if is error, depending on your version of Excel, and you can check that out in another tutorial. But don't worry, it does not hurt the spreadsheet. It's just perhaps not very aesthetically pleasing. All right, now that we've done one complete example, I want to break it down for you into the two separate VLOOKUP parts. That way it might be a little bit easier to understand. So let's do the very first VLOOKUP. The very first VLOOKUP needs to return the salesperson number over here. So equals VLOOKUP. Our lookup value is the sales number. Our table array is over here. Column index number three, range lookup false. So you can see that when we enter 2, it returns 9536, 2, 9536. And that's all that we're doing. We're getting this number to input into the lookup value argument for the first VLOOKUP. So let's do the first VLOOKUP, which is the outer VLOOKUP. For the lookup value, we use the number returned by the other VLOOKUP function, the one that we would put inside this one. Then we just do a normal VLOOKUP. So you can see that nesting these VLOOKUPs or using a double VLOOKUP is just going to remove one extra step or just remove an extra cell, this one right here. Now once more to type it in, it's really not that difficult. You just sort of have to sort everything in your mind about where everything would go. So equals a VLOOKUP. Now for the lookup value, we need another VLOOKUP. So just start typing VLOOKUP. Now here we're going to use the sales number, comma, select the first table, comma, column index number of three, because we want to use the sales person number or value as the lookup value in the original VLOOKUP or the outermost VLOOKUP, comma, false, because we want an exact match, comma, and that is the lookup value argument for the first VLOOKUP. Now we just complete the first one. Here's our table array, comma, column index number. This time we want the region, so that would be three, and false for an exact match. Make sure everything works. And that's really all there is to it. So that pretty much covers all the bases in terms of putting one VLOOKUP function within another. Remember that conceptually all you are going to be doing here is using one VLOOKUP function to get a value that you want to use as the lookup value argument in another VLOOKUP function. The only thing that makes it kind of confusing here is the type of function that we're using because here we've got two separate tables. The first or innermost VLOOKUP is going to search this table. The second or outermost VLOOKUP will search through this table. And that's really all there is to doing a double VLOOKUP or just nesting VLOOKUP functions within each other in Excel.